All right. So the title of today's message, excuse me, is The Father Shortage. Now, today is a national holiday that we call Father's Day. And there are a lot of holidays throughout the year that most people never celebrate. Do you realize that? Do you realize almost every day of the year is some kind of a holiday? Now, Father's Day is one that most of us celebrate, but there's, there's a day every day of the year for somebody, okay? Now, I'll give you an example. Right after, I'll just start at the beginning. Beginning of the year, of course, you have New Year's Day, and then what do you have? Well, on the 2nd, uh, J.R. is one that celebrates this. It's the Happy Mew Years for Cats Day. It's the Cats New Year. Yeah, but for the others of you that are more into the aviary kind of things is January 5th is National Bird Day. National Bird Day. Did you know that? How many of you celebrated National Bird Day this year? What a bunch of fuddy-duddies. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, how about this? Now, this is one that Jared does celebrate. It is January 14th, National Dress Up Your Pet Day. <laughs> Has anybody here celebrated? No, you're not celebrating. Okay. Well, you may be aware that January 18th really is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's one we celebrate. But did you know that January 20th is Penguin Awareness Day? Was anyone aware? So we need to have an awareness day of Penguin Awareness Day. Okay, we need to make people aware that there's an awareness day for penguins. All right, so January 21st is my wife's favorite. Of course, it's Squirrel Appreciation Day. <laughs> And January 22nd, answer your cat's question day. Yeah. January 25th, this is a day that nobody celebrates. It's called F National Fun at Work Day. Right? And most people go, my idea of fun at work is staying home. Right? <laughs> yeah. But so those holidays, you might have missed some of those. You might have missed the opportunity to celebrate. You see, every day can be a celebration. You could have been celebrating those holidays all along. Well, today is a little bit more of a famous holiday. It is Father's Day. And some celebrate Father's Day joyfully, and some celebrate it with a sad remembrance of someone that's no longer with us. Some aren't sure what to do with this day. You know, I mean, I'll be honest. He's not here. He probably won't know. <laughs> My father was not the gentlest of fathers. He was not the most gracious or kindest of fathers, okay? So when I go to a store and look a Father's Day card up, and it says, you were the nicest dad in the world. I go, I can't do that. I, I, no. And he move on to the next one. Well, you were so supportive. No, no. I got to find one that just says, God bless you, dad. Right? <laughs> you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. So I got to find a card that's got something nice to say. Now, some of us had a less than perfect father. Some of us had a non-existent relationship with their biological father. I don't know which category you fall into, but when you belong to Jesus, your perspective of things should be different than the world, okay? They should be different than the rest of the world. When you have Jesus, you cannot be fatherless. You cannot be fatherless. When you have Jesus, not only do you have a heavenly father, but you even possibly have many spiritual fathers. How many of you have a spiritual father or two or three or five? Right. Now, Psalms. 68, 4 through 6 says this, sing to God, sing praises to his name, exalt him who rides on the clouds, his name is the Lord, and rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless, and a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the lonely into families. So God is the father of the fatherless, and he takes those that are all by themselves, and he puts them in families, and you see that in church all the time. There's all kinds of people in your life, if you go to church long enough, that have come to church and they don't have anybody. But we become their family. And God settles them in a family and they feel brotherhood. They feel sisterhood. They feel fatherhood, motherhood, whatever. We're a family because the family of God is all united together under one Father, our Heavenly Father. And our Heavenly Father says, you're all brothers and sisters if you're in me. Okay? God is a father to the fatherless. That means if you're in Jesus, then you have a father. And not only that, but everybody else in this family has the same father. We don't have two spiritual fathers. Well, heavenly fathers, two heavenly fathers. We have one heavenly father, and we all have the same heavenly father. That means we're all of the same family. We're all of the same blood, the blood of Christ. 
The scripture doesn't stop there, though. It says that God places the solitary in families. And speaking of earthly families, it's not talking about in a heavenly family. It's saying God sets us in earthly families. You know, lonely people shouldn't be lonely when they come to church because church should be a place where people adopt the lonely people, where people bring them into the family, for they're brought into the fold and where they can feel like I belong. Now, I remember I got saved when I was 17 years old. And my family, you know, it had good and bad like a lot of families. It had function and dysfunction, all right? And I'll tell you what is uh, my, my uh, father was kind of angry man. That's what caused kind of the, the sense of the household was kind of heated. And so it was always fighting and wars and rumors of wars, you know, all kinds of stuff going on in family. And so family wasn't the most pleasant thing for me. So then I got saved when I was 17, and I got saved in, in as I've said before, it was, it was an all-black Pentecostal church. I didn't know what Pentecostal was, and I never had a black friend yet until then. But then I was adopted into a family. I'm the only white guy in an all-black church, and I felt like these people are more family to me than any family I've ever had because they're of the family of God. I felt so loved. I felt so at home because they were my people. We were of the same family. We had the same father. So God takes a solitary. I was the only, you know, I was kind of stood out like a sore thumb in that place. But, but I didn't feel like I was standing out. I felt like part of the family. Okay? So there is, or at least there was at one time, a man on the face of this earth that is or was your biological father. That had to happen. There was nobody here that's from virgin birth or anything like that, right? No? I didn't think so. Okay, but as Father's Day isn't about the fact that we were just born as a result of some man's action, but Father's Day is, is about, appreciating, about appreciating those that have been there for us, those that have been fathers in our life, whether they're biological fathers or not, those that have been in that position of a father in our lives. As I said before, if you're in Christ, not only will you share the same heavenly father with all of God's children, but you can have several spiritual fathers as well. Now, here's a couple of verses that allude to that. Paul is writing to the Corinthian church here in 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. I'm not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. Paul is saying, you people are my children. Even if you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. That is why I've sent you, Timothy, my beloved faithful child, another one of my children, in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Jesus Christ, which is exactly what I teach everywhere in every church. Paul says, I have become a father to you by the sowing of the seed of the gospel. You are begotten by the seed of the word of God, and by that you have become part of of the family of God. And Paul said, I've been like a father to you because I have not just been there to sow the seed, but I was there to train you up. I've been there to tell you the word of God, to tell you about God, to introduce you to God, to put you into a relationship with God. I've been there to encourage you. I've been there to pray for you. There are people in your life that are like that, that may not be your biological father. They've been there. They've been praying for you. They've helped you. They've assisted you. They've taught you. They've trained you. They've encouraged you. They've reprimanded you at times, corrected you at times, but they've taken the place of a father. Now, Paul calls himself a father because he gave them the thing which caused them to be born again, which is the word of God. But after their birth, he didn't just leave them without a father. He continued to spiritually feed them, to nurture them, to train them in the things of God. 2 Corinthians 12, 14 says this. Now I'm ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you because what I want is not your possessions, but you. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Paul, once again, is saying, I'm a parent to you because I came when you didn't have a spiritual connection with God, and I gave you the seed the word of God, and you became born again, and I was the person who brought that to you. But then I didn't just leave you as a babe in the woods, but I trained you. I taught you. I stayed with you. I encouraged you. I took a lot of your guff, right? I put up with you. I put up with you. But I kept with you even though you were mistreating me at times, he's saying. But I stayed with you because I'm faithful, because what's been birthed, he says, I'm not going to leave it alone, but I'm going to nurture it. I'm going to grow it. 
So Paul was there. Now, we don't even know if Paul ever had any biological children. I don't know if he ever did, but he certainly had spiritual children, didn't he? Okay? Now, we don't know if Paul even grew up in a home with the presence of a biological father, do we? But what we do know is that Paul had the same heavenly father as we all have, and that Paul became a spiritual father to many spiritual children. Now, my brother-in-law, Patrick, sitting right back there, he did not grow up with his biological father present in his household. In fact, he never knew him until just a few years ago. But I do know that one of his spiritual fathers, a father in the faith, was Pastor Trevor Harris. He's been there for him many times, who's pastored this church for 40 years. Before Patrick ever met his biological father, Trevor treated him as a spiritual son, as a spiritual family member, a son in the faith who needed some guidance, who needed some encouragement, who needed some mentoring. Somebody who that, that could grow up to be the way God intended him to be, but he needed a little help, right? Okay. Patrick and Trevor have something in common, which some people don't know. Trevor did not grow up in a household with the presence of a biological father. In fact, Trevor sought out his biological father when he was just a young boy, and he tried to establish relationship with his biological father, but his father turned him away. He was not being a father to him. He was like being a stranger. His father turned him away from his home. And as a young man, Trevor found himself truly fatherless. There was not even a stepfather in the picture because Trevor's mother had died when he was quite young. And his brother Ian and himself found themselves motherless and fatherless. They were sent away by the government to live in an orphanage till they were old enough to support themselves. But when Trevor was 17 years old, he was working as a painter. And I'm not talking about a da Vinci or, you know, a Michelangelo. I'm talking about a guy with a roller and a brush, okay? He was working as an apprentice painter in Ireland. And his boss put a little pressure on him, applied a little pressure on him, said, would you come to church with me? Just come on, come to church with me just one Sunday. Finally, Trevor reluctantly said, okay, I'll go to church with you. Trevor went to his boss's church. And that very day, Trevor Harris heard the gospel message in such a way for the first time it got him. It got to his heart. It pricked his heart. And on that day, he chose to follow Jesus. And he asked Jesus into his heart. He became born again, and he suddenly had a father, a heavenly father. But that wasn't the end of the story because his heavenly father had plans for him. So not long after receiving Jesus as his Savior, Trevor received an invitation to go to a far-off country called Canada and to go to a Bible college and to be trained for free if he could just get a ticket to get there, trained to minister God's Word. Now, the rest is history. Here he sits here. He's here, still here today. But there was another part of this story that I would like to mention. It wasn't good enough that God had just provided him for a career in life, a calling in life, a ministry in life. But he also provided this fatherless child with a father image. There was a man who took Trevor under his arm as a mentor. His name was Lauren Pritchard. He taught him. He mentored him. He spiritually sowed into his life things that the biological father never could do. But God knew what he needed. God knew the guidance he needed. If he was brought up in the house of his biological father, it's possible he never would have been introduced to the Lord, but the Lord knows what he's doing. And the Lord's a good father. And the Lord sent him other good fathers, people that could teach him. And I don't know much about Lauren's biological family, but I do know that like Paul, he became a spiritual father to this Bible, uh, Bible school student as well as some others. Trevor became a spiritual son to Lauren just like Timothy had become a spiritual son to Paul. Trevor has a story that he tells on several occasions. I've heard it on several occasions, and I'm going to get it wrong, but it'll be close enough that you'll get the picture, okay? A person that he knew, and this person felt that they needed to experience God's embrace in a more tangible way, and they expressed it by saying this, I know God loves me, but sometimes you just need to feel that love with some skin on it, 
somebody to give you an embrace, somebody to give you a hug. So what God understands about us is we know he's our father, but he sends us people into our lives. People to encourage us, to nurture us, to mentor us, to sow seeds into our life, to build us up, to make us men of God. And of course, for you ladies, there's mothers too. But this is Father's Day. So we're talking about fathers. You can have one biological father in this life, and he may have been a good father, or he may not have been a good father. You can also only have one heavenly father in this life, and he is a good father. But when it comes to spiritual fathers, you can have many spiritual fathers. Many godly men who loving, lovingly take you under their wing, who extend their hand of help to you, who take the time to care about you and guide you and encourage you and support you in your spiritual walk. These men are to appreciate, be appreciated today as well as the biological fathers, the spiritual fathers, even more so in the church. We've got to acknowledge these men, these men of God that have been good fathers. And they've all not only been fathers to the men, they've been fathers to the, to the ladies too. That woman that never had a father image in her life that was a good example. That woman that never had a father that modeled what a good man was. Because you see, you need to see what a good man is so you know who to marry, right? You don't get hooked up with the wrong one, okay? These men are to be appreciated on this day, on Father's Day. Now, uh, I have no biological children. But when people ask my wife and I if we have kids, we often say, we have no biological children, but we have many spiritual children. Many spiritual children. Spiritual fathers are more important today than they have ever been in history. Because this current generation has the worst case of fatherlessness ever in history. The absentee father is so prevalent today. Now, part of that is because, obviously, some of it is there are fathers that just, um, you know, it was a one-night stand. There are fathers that are not committed. There are fathers that are not uh, uh, faithful to their wives or to their children's lives. But there are also situations where the mother and father have split up, and perhaps they don't even live in the same state, so the presence of the father is not there. There's lots of children that grow up in fatherless homes today, lots and lots of children. And when they grow up without a father figure, it's obvious that they cannot see a model of what a godly man should be if there is no godly man present to show that image. And that's why it's so important to get the kids into church. So they can see models of men that follow God. They can see that men aren't all bad, but some of them actually are devoted to being loving, to being kind, to be cherishing, to being uplifting to, to their family, to be supportive of their family. There are men of God that are good. There are women of God that are good. But God doesn't want anybody out there to feel like they're all alone. He doesn't want anybody to be fatherless. And that's why sometimes, even as spiritual fathers, if you're one of those people that God's been working in your life to be a father, or person, sometimes you're a spiritual father of a child that's not even in the Lord yet. But you're the one that gives the example. You're the one who leads and guides. You're the one who says, I'm going to show you, son, the way to go, so that when you grow up, you will not err, but you will follow the Lord. God needs us to step up to the plate as men. He needs us to be fathers to the fatherless. He needs us to show a care for those that don't have a father. Trevor Harris has been a spiritual father to many spiritual children. Many, many spiritual children. I have no idea how many spiritual children he has. I'm sure he doesn't either. You know, there are places he's gone in Africa and, and uh, South America, India, where people have been birthed into the Lord because of the seed that he sowed into their lives. I don't know how many children he has, okay? But I do know this, is to those that the Lord has put in his circle, in his world, his circle of influence, he has been a nurturer. He has been an encourager. He has been a supporter. He has been a prayer. He has been an example of someone who shows the love of God to those that are around him. He has served this church for over 51 years. That's a long time. And he has never been an absentee father. We appreciate the deposit he has left here for generations to come and for that 
deposit. We want to honor him especially today. Today. Amen. 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 I know. Aaron, Aaron, take that to him. <laughs> That's our first gift today. Our first gift. 1 Timothy 5.17 says this, Elders who lead effectively are worthy of double honor, especially those who work at preaching and teaching. Pastor Trevor, we all want to say thank you for all that you have given us. Now, if you have a biological father that stuck around and showed you love and support, that provided guidance and provision for you and your family, then you also have something to be thankful for, okay? And not only on Father's Day, but the other days too. God blessed the fathers who stepped up to the plate and were fathers, who selflessly gave their life for the benefit of their family. God bless those fathers. Say thank you to your father if he's living this day. Your words of gratitude is going to make it all worth it. Okay. If you had a father that was there for you, but he's gone to be with the Lord, then thank your heavenly father for giving you that kind of an example in your life. It's a day to be thankful for. We didn't get to choose the family we're born into, Right? You didn't get to choose them. Some of us would have chosen some other family, but God knew what he was doing. Okay? If God placed you in a family with a good father, though, you have something to be very thankful for. On the other hand, if you didn't have a biological father present in your life, but you had a godly man in your life who showed you love, care, and guidance, and nurtured you in the things of the Lord, that's a man you can say thank you to today. That's a man that you can say, if he's still on this earth, Call him up and say, thank you for being there for me when there wasn't a biological father. You were there for me. You modeled a good example for me. You showed me what it was like to be a truly godly man. Today is a day to give those kind of people your thanks if they're alive and to give God thanks if he gave them to you in your life. Now, in the world we live in today, many fathers are absent from the lives of their children. And there's a tremendous father shortage. But if you're a man you can apply for the job of being a spiritual father to somebody because God's looking for you to step up to the plate. It doesn't matter how old you are. The elder can teach the younger. And if God has taught you something, save somebody a little bit of pain in life by showing them the shortcut, saying, don't try this. I tried it. Do, this, do it this way. Do it God's way. Do it God's way, right? Oh, if you're a man who's going to step up to the plate and be a father, God's going to give you everything you need to be a good father. You know, when, when people have children, I don't know why God did it this way. There's no class in high school for that. It's totally experimental. You know, they have children. Suddenly, I'm a father? How do you do that? How do you do that? I don't know. you got to learn on the job, and so there's lots of mistakes that are made. But you know what? Being a spiritual father... Learn from your mistakes and share that with your children, okay? This is a day of rejoicing for some, and this is a day of sorrow for others because they miss that father. This is a day of bittersweet giving of thanks for some. But the most wonderful thing at all is knowing this, that someday all of us in the family of God will be reunited with our brothers, our sisters, our fathers in the Lord, and Father God himself, and we'll all be together together in one big family. For some of you, that'll include your fathers, your real biological fathers who followed God. Thank God for them. My bi biological father has not chosen the Lord yet, and I'm praying for him every day. If your father has not chosen the Lord, even if he wasn't there in your life, pray for that man because he needs the Lord just like everybody else. Shakespeare said this in Romeo and Juliet. He said, parting is such sweet sorrow. Well, there's both sweetness and there's sorrow to be felt today, and that's because of this. Is, uh, we're going to set aside a little, bit, little time for this. Our pastor emeritus, Trevor Harris, and his wonderful wife, Valerie, are bidding us farewell for now.
for now. After being a spiritual father in this house for 51 years, Trevor and Valerie are moving with their daughter and her family to eastern Washington. Another spiritual father is departing from our presence today, but never from our hearts. So let's encourage ourselves in this. Our parting will only be for a moment in the grand scale of eternity. Now, we certainly don't want them to go without blessing them and acknowledging their contribution. So I would like to ask Trevor and Valerie to come forward. <laughs> 